Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to be continuing the malware analysis from my previous video. In the previous video, I was covering static file analysis and dynamic behavioral analysis. In this video, I'm going to cover static and dynamic code analysis. When we last left off analyzing the sample, we found that it deleted itself by invoking the command prompt and passing in a path to itself and then using slash c del pipe to null. So now what we're going to do is we're going to dig through the code to figure out exactly why and how this happened. So I've opened up Ida Freeware here, version 7, and here is my file. And we'll see that the first thing that's going to take us to is this start function. Now we can see pretty clearly by looking at this that this start function is not actually user code. It's part of the compiler prologue of whatever compiler is being used to construct this malware. And it's not actually user code. It's just the stuff that happens when you run a normal binary. So we don't really care about this. And we don't really care about finding main either. What we do care about is finding where cmd.exe was invoked from. So to do that, we need to do a simple string search. And Ida, where we do that is alt-t. And I can just type in cmd.exe. I can say find all occurrences. And I find it's in two functions, sub402410 and sub4031e4. This binary is obviously stripped, which is why we have no function names. Uh, so we just simply have to do with addresses. So let's take a look at this one first. In this one, we see here command.com and cmd.exe. We see slash c. And that's really about it. Now, both of these strings we saw in our bin text search. If we look through to here to see what this function is doing, we can see the only function calls this makes are things that manipulate file handles, that nothing in this code actually does anything. It doesn't execute anything. So this function seems like what it's doing, and uh, we also see the com spec here, which is the environment variable that holds cmd.exe. So it looks like what this function is doing is assembling the path to cmd.exe, but it's not actually using it. So let's then take a look at the second example, which is sub 402.4.10. And now here the first thing we see is a call to shell execute A. And remember, we saw this function in our import address table analysis. And if you remember that shell execute A invokes an arbitrary command, and it looks like what it's invoking here is cmd.exe. We can also see the construction of the command line. Here is the pipe to null. Here is the slash c del. And we also see function calls to get module file name A and get short path name A. These are two Win32 API calls to get the name of a file, presumably, given how we know that this works, the name of itself. So this, this is actually constructing the exact command line we saw in the previous video and executing it with shell execute A. So this is our delete function. Now that we've identified it, we can rename it so we don't simply have to refer to it as sub 402.4.10. And the way we can do this is by finding the function here and doing edit. And I can simply call it delete self, which as you can see, I've already done. So there we go. Now it has a friendly name. Now what we need to see is where this function was called from. So to do that, we simply mouse over it and press X to get a list of X refs or cross references. We notice that all function calls to delete self are being made from sub 402 AFO. This is probably the actual user main function. But again, that's not particularly important. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one we can see here is being uh, run from this call to sub 401000, another function. And depending on the result of this, it jumps to here and deletes itself. So in order to figure out why this condition is being met, we have to dig into this function. And I'll save that for later. The next condition here is looking for arg0 being compared to 4. And if it's not 4, then it's calling delete self. Remember that arg0 is the number of arguments being passed into the function. Here, we see a, the exact same comparison. And if we look up a little here, we can see the previous branch in this branch, in this branch process. Uh, so here, it's looking for arg0 being compared to 4. Here, it's looking for arg0 compared to 3. And here, it's doing the same thing in this branch. So what this probably is is different modes of operation that the malware can operate in. I will confirm this in a bit later. In this one, delete self is being called if arg0 is not 7. So this is probably a different mode of operation. This is a mutually exclusive condition. And then finally, here we see delete self being called uh, if arg0 is not equal to 3. OK, so now let's go back up further up the branch and see why this are, these comparisons are being done. So here we see arg4 being compared to dash cc. This, to me, seems like a command line switch. And again, arg4 is then the array of arguments being passed into the program. This one here is comparing it to dash re. So again, it looks like a different command line switch. 
this one is using dash IN, another one, and then this one here, this call to 41000, is being done if arg0 is 1. Remember, that means that there are no arguments being passed in. So this is the actual branch that the malware took when it deleted itself. So presumably it is something in this function that caused it to fail. So we can look through the code, but it might perhaps be better to debug through this so we can see exactly what is being done, exactly what code is being executed when we execute this malware with no arguments. So to do that, we're going to segue into debugging. Okay, so to do my debugging, I'm going to be using x64 debug, specifically the 32-bit version of it, which is called x32 debug, because they're very confusing with their names. Okay, so let's open my file here. And we know that main is at 402 AFO. We discovered that in IDA. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to 402 AFO, and I'm going to set a breakpoint. And then I'm going to hit F9 a couple times to actually get to our breakpoint. So now we can actually dig into this and see what's happening. Okay. I'm going to skip over this function because I know it's not important. The first thing it's doing here is it's comparing uh, EBP plus 8, which is actually arg0 in x64 debugs parlance, to 1. And again, we saw this in IDA. It is, of course, not going to be 1, so it is going to call 401400, which again we saw in IDA. So let's dig into that to see what that's doing. We can ascertain pretty easily from just looking at this that it's going to be looking for the presence of this registry key, software market for XPS by calling reg open key, and depending on that, it's going to do some jumping, and presumably if that key exists, it's going to look for this value call configuration. And we know this is not going to be here, so presumably this is going to fail, but let's just walk through it anyway. Okay, so we have our push to the stack of Microsoft XPS. We're going to call reg open key. We're going to test EAX. This jump is not going to be taken, and thus XOR EAX EAX is going to happen, which is going to zero it out, and then it's going to take this jump, and it's going to return and then it's going to test EAX, and then this jump will be taken, which will jump to 402.4.10, which is our delete function. So again, clearly, we need that registry key, or we need a command line argument. We didn't have either of those things in the previous demo, which is why it deleted itself. So this is the exact branch that it took. Okay, good to know. So let us now go to change command line under file, and let us add an argument, which I'm going to call blarg. And I'm going to restart my execution, F9 a couple times, and let us go. This test will now pass. It will take this jump, skipping over those few function calls. And now it's going to grab our argument, push it, and then call 402.5.10 with it. What 402.5.10 is going to do is these lines here are actually an inline string length, as you'll see in a second if we, as we go through them. By the time these lines are over, ECX stores the value 6, which is the length of my string. It's being compared to 4, which it obviously is not. And because it is not, this jump is not taken, XOR, uh, uh, EX is zeroed out, <coughs> excuse me, and then this jump is taken, and then we return 0, and we are taken right back to our delete function. So now we know we need the length to be equal to 4. So I will change the command line, and now I will call it Blah. And then I will restart once again. And I'll go through here. And so now we're going to get to our call, which I'm going to dig into. And I'm, I know we're going to get here, so I'm going to set a breakpoint here now and then get rid of my breakpoint in main just to save some time. Okay, so now our length is 4. And thus, this check will pass. And now we get to the next condition. This next condition here, what we can see it's going to be doing is looking at the first letter of the argument, which is B. And it's going to compare this to hex value 61, which is A, which is obviously is not. And thus, this jump is not taken. And thus, x or ax is called. And thus, this jump is taken. And then we fail again. So the first letter of our argument needs to be A, apparently. OK, no problem. I will change this to ALA. And I will restart again. And I will get to my breakpoint again. And now we can go through all this crap. And now this comparison will succeed. Jumping over this. And now it's going to do the next thing. And the next thing it's going to do, we can walk through all these instructions. What's going to happen is, 
after this is done, after this is done, uh, it stores the value b, hex b. What this is doing is this is actually getting the difference between the first letter of the argument and the second letter of the argument. And it wants this difference to be 1, which essentially means it wants the second letter to be b, but it's doing kind of overly complex comparison for that. And of course it is not. So this test is also going to fail and it's going to do the same thing again. All right, fine. So let us change our command line argument again and I'll change to a ba, like baby speak. And we'll restart again and get to our breakpoint again and go through all this crap. And now you see that E6 has the value 1, and thus this comparison will succeed, and thus it will skip over this. And now we're going to do the next thing. And this point is actually pretty obvious. It's moving the value of 63, or C, into DL. It's going to clear out DL here in these next few steps. And then it's going to compare this to the third letter of my argument string, which is A. And this will, of course, fail. And we get right back to our termination condition. So at this point, I'm going to make a little educated guess. And I'm going to say that the argument string it wants is A, B, C, D. So I'm going to go into change command line here. And I'm going to change this to A, B, C, D. And I'm going to restart once again. Okay. That test succeeds. Now we get to the next thing. Notice to add 1 to AL, so it looks like I was right. And this test will also succeed. Thus it moves 1 into AX, essentially meaning a successful return. And thus we get here. Now notice that all of this actually could have been undone if I simply set the value of EAX to 1 after this function call was made. But where's the fun in that? So now it's going to do the next thing. And it's going to go here. And now it's looking for dash IN, which if you recall from our analysis in IDA was one of the command line switches that this thing could take. At this point we can take a fairly educated guess and say that dash IN is probably something like install and maybe dash re is something like remove, or what have you. And this is probably something like an installation password. And in fact, that's exactly what this is. So if we then change our command line one more time and do dash in abcd and then restart our execution, and I'm just going to let this run, what should happen is that it should have installed itself. And the installation, as you can probably presume from the function 401000, is the creation of a registry key. And that registry key will be at HKLM software Microsoft XPS, but due to the fact that this is 64 bit, it's a bit more complicated than that. And it actually created, whoops, not this one, a second Microsoft key called XPS. And then here is the configuration variable. So here is the malware having successfully installed itself, now that we've reverse engineered its password. And you'll also notice that after it ran, it did not delete itself. It's still there. So very cool. We have finished our malware analysis. We have gotten the malware to successfully install itself and not delete itself through the power of reverse engineering. Thanks for watching.